Even before Germany occupied Hungary, certain Hungarian army units were mobilized and sent to the old Soviet border as a precautionary measure in case another breakthrough took place on the Eastern Front. The occupation simply hastened this process, which did not face serious opposition, as most Hungarian political and military leaders could not imagine working with Stalin's Soviet Union, so even those who were tired of the war were determined to delay the Soviet advance until the Allies arrived. In late March, 1st Army was subordinated to Army Group North Ukraine and was reinforced with the 2nd Armored Division, which joined the 1st and 2nd Mountain Brigades and 16th and 24th Infantry Divisions. Even though fortifications, the Arpad Line, had been built along the mountains, 1st Army received orders to move into Galicia, while three more divisions, 27th Light, 25th and 20th, were assembled between the Tatar Pass and the city of Kolozhvar as a reserve. In the meantime, 13th Infantry Division, that had been guarding the southern border with Croatia and Serbia, was relieved by border guard units and was also made available for transfer to the Eastern Front. These movements should have eased Romanian concerns regarding a possible Hungarian attack, but first Romanian army stayed in southern Transylvania with its five infantry, one cavalry and two mountain divisions. For the moment, Romania was still loyal to the Axis cause, but it stayed ready for all eventualities. In early April, the Hungarian Occupation Forces Command was dissolved, 7th Corps with its three reserve divisions, 18th, 21st and 201st, was reassigned to 1st Army, while 8th Corps was renamed 2nd Reserve Corps and assumed all occupation duties with its five reserve divisions. Since 7th Corps was still holding three bridgeheads across the Dniester River, it came into contact with the enemy first, as 4th Tank Army and 38th Army were advancing in Ukraine. The 201st Reserve Division was thrown out of its position and forced to retreat to Kolomea, then to Delatin. 18th Reserve Division withstood the first attack, while 19th abandoned Niazviska. 1st Army arrived in the area to draw as many Soviet troops away from its neighbors as possible, relieving the pressure on German and Romanian units at Yashi. It was to establish a solid defense line and plug the gap that had opened up between the two army groups during the previous Soviet advance. Interestingly, its initial targets were already in Soviet hands, so it had to launch a counterattack, capture these towns and villages, then switch to defense and stop, or at least delay any further Soviet attacks. Its infantry, armored and reserve divisions had to secure a line from Kalus and Stanislav all the way to the Tatar or Jablonica Pass, with 1st Panzer Army on their left and German 8th Army on their right flank. The snowed-in passes and muddy roads delayed troop movements, so the attack was postponed to the 17th of April. The main targets were Kuti, Kolomea and Obertin along the Prut River. On the first day, Stuka dive bombers attacked, followed by German 46th Panzer Corps and the Hungarian troops. The exhausted Soviet units did not offer strong resistance, so 2nd Armored and 16th Infantry Divisions took their first objectives, along with 18th Reserve Division. Nadvorna and Delatin were also captured, 27th Light Division took Zavye, but Soviet reinforcements arrived, stiffening the line. On the 19th of April, 2nd Armored won a tank battle at Nadvorna. This was the first time its Turan Mark II tanks encountered T-34s, and while the short 75mm gun was not ideal against armor, they did relatively well. However, by the end of the day, only 30 tanks were still operational. 16th Infantry Division was reinforced with the 1st Assault Gun Battalion, and its 30 Zrini Mark II vehicles, it surrounded Otinia, taking 500 prisoners and destroying 70 34s. In the meantime, Chief of the Hungarian General Staff Szombathelyi was replaced by General Janusz Vörös, 
while the troops started to encounter fresh Soviet reserves, so Kolomea, the main target, could not be captured. On the 22nd of April, 16th Infantry Division was attacked and pushed back by Soviet 27th Tank Brigade, but the 1st Assault Gun Battalion saved the day, knocking out 17 T-34s, so the infantry recovered and captured more ground. To the south, 27th Light Division outflanked the Soviets, so it was soon attacked, but at least it relieved the pressure on the two mountain brigades to its north. Commanding General of 1st Army Geza Lakatos was replaced by Karoy Berekvi, who was more pro-German, but the army now had to take a defensive posture as the attack had run out of steam. Nonetheless, the front was stabilized, they tied down as many Soviet forces as possible, so these could not achieve further gains. In early May, the Germans demanded the mobilization of 6th and 7th infantry divisions in order to send them to the front as well. By the end of the month, 7th infantry arrived with German weapons, it joined the two mountain brigades, three infantry, two reserve and one armored divisions, although two German infantry divisions were also subordinated to 1st Army, while the 201st Reserve Division was disbanded, its remnants were used to refill 18th Reserve Division. By mid-June, casualties reached 26,000, with 3,500 dead, but 15,000 men had arrived as replacements, and more units were incoming. The quiet period was used to prepare defensive positions. Three separate lines were built, the Prince Eugen line 10 kilometers behind the front, followed by the Hunyadi line at the foothills of the Carpathians, with trenches, barbed wire and pillboxes, and the St. Laszlo line along the old Polish-Hungarian border, running along ridges and mountain peaks. A fourth line, the Arpad line, also ran along to the mountains, but this received most of the material and human resources, as it was the last barrier before the Hungarian plain. Things didn't look good. First Army lacked thousands of pistols, rifles and machine pistols, hundreds of machine guns, along with hundreds of mortars and big guns. The slow production of Zrinyi assault guns continued, eight infantry divisions received their battalions, but there were never enough Zrinyis, so German Hetzer and Stug vehicles were also used, along with Turan tanks. In the meantime, 2nd Reserve Corps and its remaining three reserve divisions were pushed back towards Brest in Poland. Despite the protest of Horty and the Hungarian High Command, the 1st Cavalry Division was also mobilized and sent to the border in June, with 84 Turan tanks, 23 Chaba armored cars, and 7 Nimrod anti-aircraft vehicles. Promises were made to use it only together with 1st Army, but it was then shipped to the Pripyat marshes and used against local partisans. When Army Group Center was shattered by a new Soviet offensive in late June, the Hungarian unit was ordered to stop a tank attack, during which it suffered heavy casualties. 1st Cavalry was then slowly pushed back, its men dismounted and fought as infantry, only delaying the Soviet advance, but not stopping it. By mid-July, all tanks had been lost, its commander, General Antal Vattai, continued to retreat until early August, when it was finally relieved and transferred to Warsaw for rest. The Germans intended to use this unit against Polish partisans, but its new commander, General Mihai Ibrani, refused, emphasizing the long-standing friendship with the Polish people. The unit was renamed 1st Hussar Division, it assisted in the defense of Warsaw, often working with the Polish resistance, it was then transported back to Hungary in late September. German reports, even from Guderian himself, often complemented the behavior and achievements of the Hungarian troops. By then, the situation in Hungary and at the front deteriorated. The country was subject to frequent Allied bombing, Budapest and many other cities were hit on a weekly, sometimes on a daily basis, knocking out manufacturing plants and transportation hubs, disrupting the already slow and delayed production of armored vehicles and airplanes. 
First Army was gradually pushed back to the Carpathian Mountains, while other Soviet units entered Romania and used the country's exit from the war to reach the southern passes. I will talk about this period in my next video. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one!